Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome. Welcome to this CISL's IPTIC convention right here at Singapore. It's a landmark convention because this is the Golden Jubilee celebration of this fantastic organization. So that's unusual. What's usual, of course, is that this annual World Pulses Convention is the same. It's power-packed, and this year it is geared to make your pulses race. For the opening ceremony and welcome remarks, please welcome the President, Cecils, Mr. Hakan Bahichi. Please welcome the CEO of DMCC Dubai, Gautam Sashital. And for the keynote address, Group Managing Director and CEO, Olam International Limited, Chairman, IE Singapore, Mr. Sunny Verghese. A good morning to you, gentlemen, and thank you for starting this Golden Jubilee celebration of Cecil's Great Stead. Ladies and gentlemen, the gentleman who steps up to speak to you needs no introduction. He is the Group CEO of Hakan Agro DMCC, which, as you know, is an agricultural and food commodity supply chain multinational based out of Dubai, but with facilities in over 26 countries across the world. What you probably don't know is that he has a great interest in literature, having done his bachelor's in English literature with his MBA from Wollongong, Australia. With over two decades of experience, he has steered his company, and of course, over the last few years, Cicel's IPTIC as its president. So, ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome for the welcome address and the opening ceremony, President Sissels, Mr. Hakan Bahichi. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Before I start my speech, I offer my condolences to our American friends for the tragedy that happened yesterday. I would like to welcome you all, or all our distinguished over 700 delegates in this beautiful country and in this great venue. This is a special convention because we are celebrating Cecil's Golden Jubilee. It's amazing to see the transformation that the organization has gone through from a humble uh, beginning with predominantly European heritage back in 1963 into a global confederation with over 17 associations today, and over 800 members from 58 different countries. I wonder how proud the founders of this confederation would feel today when they see this growth and <clears throat> the transformation of this organization. We tried to bring some of the eldest veterans of the industry, like Mr. Schuluter, who is now 94, Unfortunately, he could not make it because it was too long for him. I'm grateful for what they have done to this industry. The program we have prepared promises again to deliver the most interesting and informative speakers and panelists with an in-depth analysis of industry trends and expectations. I hope you shall find them interesting and useful for your business. Taking this opportunity for having, our, having completed our first two years term, I shall briefly highlight some of the many achievements that this executive committee has accomplished during this term. I already wrote this in our e-magazine, The Passport, so I apologize from those that shall be a repetition. For the first time in Cecil's history, a proper five-year five business plan was prepared and <clears throat> approved and implemented. We already implemented an important part of this business plan in these two years. A dispute resolution mechanism is now in place. Our regional mediators are well trained and ready to serve the industry. Special thanks to Andrew Jacobs for his leadership in this project. At the Dubai Convention, we introduced Cecil's efforts to allow us to show appreciation to our long-standing, reputable, and committed industry veterans. Our first efforts went to Schluter and Mark Germany and World Food Program Italy. We shall announce this year's efforts later on during the Galadina. 
our steering committee that included representatives from USA, Canada, UK, Germany, Italy, and Belgium worked over many months with EU legislators and Codex Alimentarius and delivered a positive resolution to a very difficult situation which the industry faced in 2011 concerning glyphosate residues. The issue which, without our intervention, would almost certainly have resulted in severe restrictions on the global movement of pulses is now resolved. My special thanks to Michael Kemperdick and the team for and Michael's leadership in this project. The quality of our service to our <clears throat> members has been considerably improved. Our staff, Gökçe and Ludovica, worked hard to ensure your requests are well attended and handled. Again, my special thanks to Cecil's staff. And my special thanks to Gavin Gibson, who has kindly accepted um, uh, my invitation to become the CEO of this organization. So he was acting CEO until uh, the General Assembly. From now on, he will be the CEO of this, of this organization. We maintain a close affiliation with Dubai Multi-Commodity Center, which has not only provided CISOs with a free office, but also avail support when needed. The MCC has embraced us, and you could see the impact that made during Dubai Convention, which was a memorable one, with record attendees made even better the availability of a wonderful choice of venue, content, and the facilities around it. The MCC is also our main sponsor of this convention, and I would like to thank Mr. Got Gautam Shashital, <coughs> the COO of the MCC, who will deliver his speech after me for their support and long-term vision of cooperation with CISOs in many next conventions to come. The global pulse industry is by nature fragmented and divided, and as a consequence, its huge importance has not always been recognized. During the last two years, CISELS, as your peak global body, has managed a consolidated approach identifying and publicizing an industry worth $100 billion annually, which has recently attracted attention of financial institutions, insurance, and logistic agents. For the first time in CISO's history, we organized a coordinated outreach program during this term with high, highly successful roadshows to Nepal, India, and Ethiopia, greatly increasing our visibility and exposure. I said at the outset of my term, if we work together, we can take the organization to the next level. I'm proud to say that associations from Myanmar, Singapore, Ethiopia, one more from Turkey, Japan, and most recently Ukraine have now joined our confederation. The French Association and the Chinese Chamber of Commerce Federation also came back, and with the strategic alliance with British Edible Bean Association to partner our International Year of Pulse project, we now have 17 member associations and we continue to increase our visibility and strength. I also pledge that we will give back to industry. During this term, we launched a project that to have 2016 declared, United Nations International Year of Pulses. The, pers the purpose of this project is to create awareness globally for pulses in terms of health, nutrition, and food security. We appointed a special consultant, Robin Anderson, and organized several campaigns in Turkey, Canada, Australia, USA, India, and Italy. And Turkey moved the motion in FAO in November 2012 and received extraordinary support from the FAO Council members. My special thanks to <coughs> Tim McGreevy, to Gavin Gibson and Gordon Bacon for helping us uh, to convince their governments to uh, uh, move from their principle uh, on the international path here. Thank you very much once again. And <clears throat> on 23rd April, uh, the Turkish ambassador in Rome is organizing a reception at his residence 
inviting diplomatic missions of various countries seeking support to our project. Together with Robin, we will be giving an update session of this project just before the lunch today, and I recommend to you all not to miss this special session. Our executive <coughs> director and some of our executive board members have also participated in a number of international forums during the last year with the aim of increasing awareness, production, and consumption of pulses. Amongst these are included UN World Export Development Forum over three days in Jakarta, several meetings with the FAO in Rome, a week-long UN World Food Program workshop on global food security con convened by the McGill Foundation and funded by the Rock Rockefeller Foundation with support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation in Bellagio, Italy. What do we do for the future of CISOs was a question I asked during our Dubai convention after having seen many members arriving there with their younger generation. We immediately launched the CISOs Youth Initiative, providing them a platform to create uh, the Young Club. This initiative aims to engage our young professionals and ensure that our next generation of the Pulse family is ready to take its place and lead us as the older, gen older generation moves back to the sidelines. You would have agreed with me, I'm sure, had you witnessed the excitement of these young individuals when they met in their first session, which we organized in Paris, just before the CL show. They have decided to call their group as CISL's Young Professionals and are now working to attract more of our <clears throat> young professionals, are now working to attract more of uh, many projects uh, and coming young people to join them. They will work on many, many projects that include <clears throat> such things as scholarships for studies on pulse breeding, professionals exchange programs, and importantly, developing a shadow cabinet for our succession plans. I encourage you all, our young professionals, to join this group and help us to shape the future of our industry. I shall be moderating a session at 4 p.m. today with the leaders of this young professional group and hope to address many interesting topics with them. Last but not, le but not the least, we started our monthly magazine, The Passport. We ran a Name Your <coughs> Magazine competition and Marcus Coles from Maviga, London, became the name father of this magazine with a free convention registration as his prize. But I couldn't see Marcus here. Uh, so uh, it seems um, the, the, the offer was only for Singapore, by the way. He doesn't have it anymore. <laughs> Our EMAC committee endeavors to provide you the latest news and updates from different parts of the world. My special thanks to our editor, Chandra Sheke, who <clears throat> and Sanjeev Dubey, who is chairing this EMAC committee, for helping us to bring this important communication tool to fruition. There is much more that we are working on right now. You can be sure we'll be announcing the results of this project as soon as they are successfully completed. I'm proud to be able to say that CISL Ziptik has now truly moved to the next level of its development. We have created good financial reserves thanks to our sponsors and delegates for the first time can now support projects like that of an international year of pulses and can at least engage qualified and, ex <coughs> qualified and experienced external resources on industry related issues. As part of our inclusion, integration, fair regional representation, policy that we have been implementing over the last couple of years. I'm very happy to see that the good mix that we have on our board, which includes representatives from Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, Chile, China, Egypt, France, India, Italy, Pakistan, Spain, Sri Lanka, Switzerland, South Africa, Turkey, UAE, and USA, and new members from Japan, Myanmar, Ethiopia, Singapore, makes the board even more regionally distributed. 
I would like to thank all the 26, now 28, with the new members added, for their hard work and support, and I welcome the new members. And finally, to you, all our esteemed members, demanding is your right. Your, you demand, we deliver. We still have a lot of work to do until, as I said in Dubai, I have a dream, two of the, until two of the four plates on this planet is served with pulses. Let us all continue to work together to make this dream come true for our industry. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that was President Cecil's in its Golden Jubilee anniversary. Mr. Khan Bahichi, thank you, sir, for your defining address. Up next, a gentleman who might be not too well known to you in this sector of the industry, but he's, he steps to this day with a wealth of experience about two and a half decades across various portals, including, of course, finance, treasury, accounting, risk management, corporate governance, and most importantly, the oil and natural gas industry. He is now, of course, appointed uh, with the Dubai Multi Commodity Center Authority, the DMCC, which is a government of Dubai owned organization established about a decade ago with a mandate to promote commodity trade flows through Dubai. Mr. Sashital, who steps up next, is the CEO of DMCC. As you're aware, the DMCC, in a short space of less than a decade, has established a unique ecosystem to support a range of commodity sectors, including a robust regulatory framework and the innovative physical and financial support that is required to do that. The Jumeirah Lakes Towers Free Zone, administered by the DMCC, is the fastest growing free zone in the UAE, which has more than 4,800 companies. The DMCC's stewardship has seen Dubai grow to the third largest diamond trading center in the world and the sixth largest bullion trading center, and of course, a very significant pulse trading center. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Chief Operating Officer, Dubai Multi Commodity Center Authority, Mr. Gautam Shashital. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Cecil's annual convention. It is my honor and privilege to address you this morning. As COO of the Dubai Multi Commodity Center Authority, we were involved in CECLs last year, and I'm delighted to see many friends, business partners, and of course, leading soft commodity experts present in this room today. The opportunity to speak this morning comes at an exciting time because it's Cecil's 50th anniversary, and it was wonderful to hear Hakan talk about the progress that Cecil's is making. So if I can indulge, uh, if you can indulge me for a second, if I can ask the room to applaud for the Cecil's team for a wonderful job uh, that they've done. And if I, can ask, if I can ask the executive board of Cecil's to just stand up to accept that applause for a second, I can see several of you in this room here. Wonderful job, thank you. Over the next two days, the conference will address key themes around pulse trading and provide insights into global supply and demand, product innovation, emerging markets, and so on. But of course, this conference is also about knowledge sharing and interaction with current and potential partners. I know this because I see most people, most of the 750 people outside the room usually, rather than in the room, so it's great to see so many people here at the opening. Let me talk briefly about food security, and I'm no expert on that. At DMCC, we absolutely realize the challenges you're all faced with, as demand for food is currently increasing at twice the rate of supply. Last year's conference was certainly an eye-opener where discussions focused on the extent of investment requirements for food security and where that investment should come from. In the coming two decades, the world's producers will need to feed an additional three billion people, of which the majority will be in the developing world. The implication is that the global population will require a 70% increase in agricultural production by 2050. So where do we stand on this today? As most of you will be aware, the pulse trade is constantly growing, but dwindling resources have caused stagnating yields. 
rising food prices, extreme climatic variability have underscored the fragility of global food security. In most developing countries, pulses play a fundamental role as a low-fat, high-fiber source of protein and therefore are of particular importance to ensure food security. In both developing and developed countries, pulses are economically important crops for farmers. Pulses are central to food security, nutrition, rural development, and sustainability, and are one of the few commodity groups that are key to the world's future. Now, I'm not about to tell you how to solve these problems, but would like to move to Dubai and how Dubai is uniquely positioned to contribute towards resolving this global challenge by increasing the flow of trade in pulses around the world. Cecil's has been a member of DMCC since 2006, highlighting the synergies between pulse trading and Dubai. Dubai's large storage capacity, processing plants, and strategic location between East and West have enabled the UAE to become a significant trading hub for the agri-sector. The agri-industry plays a crucial role in the GCC countries, where local production is scarce and there is dependence on importation of food to meet demand. Today, only 10% of the GCC's food is produced locally, and imports originate from countries such as Africa, India, and the USA. As of 2011, the agri-sector in the UAE was valued at about $7 billion, an increase of 11% over the previous year. Our biggest trading partner is India, which accounts for as much as 25% of the world's output, and incredibly, vegetarian Indians, one of them is me as well, make India the largest consumer of pulses at approximately 30% of global consumption. Now about Dubai as a natural commodity trading center. As a global commodities hub, we have successfully supported the trade by providing world-class infrastructure and innovative products and services and the appropriate amount of regulation. These are key to enabling trade participants like you to trade with confidence. At DMCC, we are 100% dedicated to establishing Dubai as a global commodities trade hub. DMCC are also the licensing authority for the Jumeirah Lake Stars Free Zone. Today, we have over 125 Pulse Stroke Agri companies registered with us, including some recognized names in trading houses such as Hakan Agro, Cargill, Suckden, Agrozan Commodities, Louis Dreyfus, and many more. Dubai is perfectly positioned on the global trade route, situated between producing and consuming countries, from the west to the east, and vice versa. Dubai's cargo facilities, ports, and airports connect to over 140 destinations, and this number is growing fast. The leaders of the UAE have always placed great importance in innovation and growth. As His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President, Prime Minister of the UAE, and the ruler of Dubai recently said, there is no finish line in developing innovation. In order to do that, we recognize the need for appropriate amounts of regulation, physical and financial infrastructure, and therefore, DMCC will keep innovating to ensure that we complement other trading centers to ensure the flow of commodity trade continues to go, grow through Dubai. So how do we do that? To give you an example, one of our most pioneering products that we launched recently is called DMCC Tradeflow, a central registry of ownership for commodities stored in Dubai. It is widely used in the agri-trade as it enables physical inventories to be converted into tradable warrants, which can be pledged with financiers. DMCC also runs a formal warehouse inspection and ratings program and ensures enforceability of defaults. Talking about flow of trade and figures, the numbers speak for themselves. In just 10 years, DMCC and Dubai have enabled the flow of gold to increase from some $6 billion a year in 2003 to $70 billion in 2012. Today, over 20% of the world's physical gold is traded through Dubai. Diamonds have increased from some $5 million 10 years ago to $39 billion in 2012. 
Dubai is today the third largest diamond trading center in the world. The UAE is also the largest re-exporter of tea with a 60% market share, valued at about 48 million in 2011. And the GLT free zone has not 4,800 companies, but 6,300 companies, and we're growing at 200 new companies every month. This makes us the largest free zone in the UAE. The estimated value addition of these companies is between eight to $10 billion a year. In closing, Dubai's flow of commodities trade has grown exponentially over a short period of time. I'm pleased to say our strategy to support the pulses market has been extremely successful too. And the industry is seeing increasing recognition that we can deliver real value to the industry participants. Most importantly, we are committed to continuously listen to market needs whilst creating a world-class environment in Dubai to enable you, our members, and key trading partners, and industry participants to trade with confidence. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Cecils, for giving me the opportunity to speak here today. Enjoy the convention, and I look forward to seeing many of you over the next couple of days and in Dubai in the near future. Thank you.